is Fernando Hernandez and my science fair project is called Magnetism, Magnetic Liquids. The purpose of this experiment is to find out if liquids could be magnetic. My hypothesis is that liquids could be magnetic. The materials I used were vegetable oil, plastic cups, plastic tray, laser toner, iron oxide, iron filings, magnets, glass jar, water, sticks and spoons. Mixture one, I poured oil into the cup, I added toner, I mixed the ingredients, I poured on a clear, plastic clear tray, I placed the magnet underneath, um, it formed a, a lump and it also followed the magnet as I moved. Mixture two, I poured oil into into cup, added black iron oxide, mixed the ingredients, poured on a pl pl plastic clear tray, I placed the magnet underneath, um, and it formed a big lump. I moved the magnet, and it it followed the ma the liquid followed the magnet. Mixture three, I combined ingre ingredients from mixture. I combined ingredients from mixture one and two. I added extra toner and black iron oxide. I mixed the ingredients. I poured on plastic clear tray. I placed the magnet underneath, and it formed a bigger lump. Um, I moved the magnet under the tray, and it followed the magnet. Mixture four. I added iron filings to the to the mixture. I mixed the ingredients. I poured on a plastic clear tray. I placed the magnet underneath, and it formed a, a lump. And I moved the magnet under the tray, and it followed. And the liquid followed the magnet. I pour, pour, pour the mixture in a glass jar of water and seal. Here. See it, it um, makes like a lump. And this is also um, I think mixture four, but without the water. And it still did the same. In conclusion, people believe magnets are solids, but this proves that liquid can be magnetic. They are called ferrofluids. Toner has tiny particles of iron and iron oxide is made of magnetite. Iron filings are tiny pieces of iron. All of these are attracted to magnets. When combined with oil, they become feral fluids. My name is Larissa Moreno. I'm from the elementary school and I'm in first grade with Mr. Alvarado. This is my science project. It's about what sugar the ants prefer. And I was thinking what sugar that they like. I was thinking it was a spanda that was not. It was brown sugar. As soon as we were checking all these Mm. Five hours, ten minutes, twenty minutes, thirty minutes, one hour, and say after six and after all the play was four, and you're showing the pictures. How many ants come and eat the sugar? And here showing how many of the sugar they eat. And here we use um, gran granulated sugar, power sugar, brown sugar, splenda, sweet and low, and we use each plate each plate and we put 
circles in it like for no the color up ish of the one this one we put blue this one we put pink this one we put yellow this one we put orange and this one we put brown and all that my science project is about what that the ants prefer the sugar and that's what it's all about my hypothesis was where i learned this is a great way of ants they are open to some most of the sophistic ants especially never cast house as it with the thin ash on the ants nurse to sun and in fire or doors and to have big prints on tall so and burnt up brown sugar keeps the small super in has a double test start some and more must add of the milk it's more effort to the and prefer preferred and never end with and uh, some time. Hi, my name is Victoria Michelangeli. I am a third grade student at Malakoff Elementary. The title of my project is How Sweet is the Fruit We Eat? My problem is which fruit has the most sugar. My hypothesis, I thought a strawberry will have the most sugar. My materials, glucose test strip, freshly fruit of your choice, stopwatch and notebook. My graph is comparing all the fruits I used for the project. My procedure is have your stopwatch ready, press your this test strip against a freshly cut slice of fruit until the test strip is wet. Start the stopwatch as soon as the test strip has been placed on the fruit. Wait for 30 seconds. Compare the color on the test strip with the color on the side of the strip container to find out the amount of glucose. Repeat step one through five for every fruit to be tested. Record all the data in your notebook. Results. Apples, kiwi, grapes, kiwi, mangoes, pears, and strawberries have 1,000 milligrams of glucose. Bananas, oranges, and watermelons have 2,000 milligrams of glucose. Conclusion. My hypothesis was not correct. Strawberries do not have the most sugar. Bananas, oranges, and watermelons have more sugar. Thank you. This is the end of my presentation. Hi, I'm Alba Gonzalez. I'm in fifth grade and I go to Kaysen Elementary. I do my project on sublimation. Sublimation is when a solid turns into a gas. My question was, which temperature of water accelerates the sublimation process the most? My hypothesis was, that the hot water will accelerate the sublimation process the most. I used Dawn, large bowl, dry ice, piece of cloth, timer, measuring tape, water, a cup, and a measuring cup. The variable was the hot water, the room temperature water, and the cold water. I prepared the soapy mixture by combining some liquid dishwashing soap and water in a cup. First, I poured one liter of hot water into the bowl. I used the rubber gloves to take a piece of dry ice and placed it in the bowl. Next, I took a piece of cloth and dipped it in the soapy mixture and rubbed it around the dip of the bowl. I dragged the cloth around the bowl until a bubble was created. Once the bubble is created, set your timer to 150 seconds and measure the height with a measuring tape. Conduct two additional trials of each. My results were that the hot water accelerated the sublimation process the most. When I used the hot water, the dry ice went from being a solid to a gas a lot quicker than it did in the room temperature water and cold water. This caused the bubble to expand the most given in the 150 seconds. I was able to conclude that the hotter the water, the faster the sublimation process occurs. 
Hi, my name is Ligara. I'm from Colonel Santos Benavis Elementary School, and my science project is which kind is the most acidic. My hypothesis is that the sour candies will be the most acidic and will rank the lowest on the pH scale. My materials are sour candies, warheads, and sour patch kids. My sweet candies are Pixie Sticks, Jolly Ranchers, and Smarties. My chocolate candies are Hershey's and Sneakers. You also need distilled water, page paper, page color chart, small part, steering spoon, stove, a candy thermometer, cooking spatula, heat proof gloves, protective goggles, pencil paper, gun. For my procedure, you will have to arrange all your candies on a clean surface and you have to do a simple taste test. I chose sourdough for it. And you take your notebook and think about the two major elements, the candy and the Page skill. To test all your candies, you have to melt them first. Grab a gun up and put on your protective gear, which is your goggles and milk. Start with any type of candy, I, I chose sour. Add a cup or two of distilled water into the pot and place it on the stove. Have an adult help you set and put and correct the correct stove heat. Um, the hard candy should be over medium and the chocolate candy should be on a low setting. As you wait for the candy to, to heat up, keep your eye on the contents and stir them quickly. Once the candy begins to liquefy, carefully place the candy thermometer in the pot. The hard candies reach about 300 and the chocolate candies reach about 115. Have a grown up help you remove the pot from the stove. Quickly take a piece of the page paper and dip the end of it into the pot. I take out the page paper and wait. Once the color appears on the page paper, compare it to the to the pH chart. Write down the results and see if all the three trials are correct. Write down all your results and look over all your notes to see if their hypothesis or materials are correct. The results of my experiment proved that the sour candies were the most acidic as compared to the sweet and chocolate candies. The sour, can the sour candies measured the lowest on the pH scale, which judges from 1 through 14, while all the candies measured low, below 7 on the pH scale, the Warheads and the Sour Patch Kids m measured lowest at 2 and the Hershey Milk Chocolate measured at the highest at 6. Here are my observations, here are the scale from 0 to 14. The yellow one is the first trial, the pink is the second trial, and the third is the third trial. The Warheads and the Sour Patch Kids, they all measured at a two. The Jolly Ranchers, Pixie Sticks, and Smarties, all the three trials, they measured at a four. The Hershey's, they all measured at a six, and the Sneakers measured at a five. And these are the same as well, except the breakdown. My conclusion is that there's a, there's a sufficient or a sufficient evidence to support my hypothesis. The sour candies registered the lowest on the pH scale and therefore were the most acidic as compared to sweet and chocolate candies. Hi, my name is Saida Gonzalez. I'm a fourth grader in Chapman Elementary School and the title of my project is How Permanent Are Permanent Markers? The question, the question that I wanted to do was how permanent are permanent markers? What sol solvents such as water, alcohol, acetone, and soap will remove the ink? My hypothesis is, is if permanent marker needs to be removed from the surface, then the use of alcohol, acetone, toothpaste works better than water or soap because these solvents contain stronger chemicals that will better dissolve a permanent marker. The materials that I used were, were a black Sharpie permanent marker, a bottle of 100% acetone, a tube of toothpaste, toothpaste, water, dishwashing soap, laundry detergent, rubbing alcohol, six scrub brushes, rubber gloves, camera, light colored t-shirt, piece of carpet, plastic surface, wood surface, and timer. What I got, what I did was I got four surfaces, which were plastic, wood, t-shirt and carpet. After I was done with my with, with my procedure, um, I I collected the, the data and put it on a chart. My results were I noticed that and I noticed that permanent marker is easier to remove in plastic surfaces than the wood t-shirt or carpet. 
the most difficult to work with was the carpet. Instead of being removed, it smears on the, on the area. On the wood surf surface, permanent marker, it ink dissolves, leaving a ble bleeding effect. This is how it had the bleeding effect. The surface that I was able to remove less ink was on the t-shirt. The stronger sol solvents to remove permanent marker ink were acetone and rubbing alcohol on both surfaces, while water and detergent were the least effective. In conclusion, I learned that permanent does not always mean permanent marker when talking about markers. I learned that permanent markers contain permanent ink mixed with other strong solvents similar to alcohol. That is why alcohol and other strong solvents like acetone are better at removing permanent marker ink in certain surfaces like plastic.